Hey Andrew, what you working on, man? Hey, what's going on, brother? Got a fun one here. Got a 2007 BMW 328i with the N52 engine in it. The client states that they have a crank no start condition. Um, this client has definitely redefined throwing the parts cannon at one. We've already figured out the issue with this car, so we're going to go back through and show you our diagnostic process, show you how we came to our conclusion. Um, so let's get into it. All right, so let's start off with the fun part. In the notes, the client let me know that uh, he had all the old parts and all the modules and things that he replaced labeled for me in the trunk. So let's, uh, let's see what we got here. As we can see, we've done a, a few footwell modules, a DME, AC control head, which is interesting. You'll see that in a little while. We've got a, a yaw rate sensor. He said he's put a couple of batteries in this car as well. Um, so let's, let's get in where I started on this thing. We've actually removed the affected relay from the circuit that we found to be the primary issue. That way we can kind of walk through the steps with y'all and have the, the no start condition that he was exhibiting. So let's get to the front here and, and dig in. So I started off obviously doing a code scan. Um, we pulled codes up with the ISTA software. Hang on, I want to give them, give them all the pictures yet. All right, so we got the code scan. Went through here, a lot of footwell module, fault codes, some messages missing, exhausted battery, etc. Now I will mention that this battery was disconnected when I originally went out to the vehicle. I reconnected the battery in order to push the car in the shop and attempt to start it. But we've got no DME fault codes after several times of cranking. Um, so we went back to the basics. I mean, what does an engine need to run? You need compression, fuel, air, and spark. So <clears throat> one quick test I like to do just to establish whether or not I've got spark is I'll just shoot some alternative fuel into the air box to see if the car attempts to start. Obviously, it's not going to run like it should, but just to give it some fuel to see if it's actually sparking. Now, if I can, uh, if I can get my assistant in here to go ahead and crank this thing up. <laughs> assistant. We're gonna add, we're go, we'll show you it's got a no start right now. Go ahead, Sherwood. You gotta press the clutch for manual. Oh, crap. <laughs> There's still a little in there. Try it again. All right, so we've got, we've got a no start condition. So we'll add alternative fuel into the intake. All right, so we see it, it tries to start on our alter alternative fuel. So that tells us we've got spark. So all the, all the coils are functioning the way they should. So now we need to start looking at the fuel side of things. Um, I've got a fuel pressure tester. This is actually our fuel injector cleaner setup from Valvoline, but I like it because I've got a gauge here. I can do a fuel pressure test just like any fuel pressure tester. And in the event that I don't have fuel pressure, I can add alternative fuel to make the car run. All right, Sherwood, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and crank it. Let's show them we've our fuel pressure gauge. We're watching this one here. And we've got no fuel pressure on this vehicle. So the beauty of this is now I can apply pressure, pressurized fuel to the fuel rail to verify that the injectors are functioning. The reason I'm going this route as opposed to scoping the injectors or anything like that is there's a ton of plastic covering that covers all the wires and it's an entire assembly of all the connectors. So I've already got this hooked up, it's quicker. Let's go ahead and add pressurized fuel. 65 PSI should be enough to make it start and turn this valve now we're pushing fuel all right professor and she's purring like a kitten all right thank you so that tells us crank sensors good cam sensors are happy it's starting it's running we're getting fuel injector pulse we're getting spark we're just missing fuel pressure so fuses probably could start there but on this particular vehicle it's very easy to get to the fuel pump 
So you just pop, the, lift the rear seat and the fuel pump wires are right here. Um, so we've gained access to the fuel pump. We're tapped into our powers and grounds. Now we're gonna proceed with testing powers and grounds at our fuel pump. All right, we've got our eight channel ATS lab scope hooked up here. Just wanna take a brief side note to show you proper ways of hooking a lab scope up. Number one, whenever you're diagnosing a car, maintainer, we cannot stress this enough. Um, you always wanna hook your ground for your scope up to the battery ground terminal. Um, are you gonna show it? It's back here. We're hooked up to the battery ground. There. All right. So we got our battery ground hooked up. We've got two channels tapped into the power and ground supply going to the fuel pump. Yes, we're piercing wires. Yes, we're going to reseal them to prevent any water intrusion. All right. So we got it pulled up here. I just I like going to the stack scope setting. Because I can verify if those boxes are red, that means we do not have a good connection. If they're not red, we're good to go. We've got a good connection. So we'll go into deep record here. We're only watching channels one and two. All right, Professor, can you give her a crank? All right. And as we can see here, we're stuck on ground. It is still trying to start because it's got a little pressure in the rail from our previous test. But we can see we've got no power supply to that fuel pump. All right. So looking at our wiring diagram, let's, uh, let's see how this thing's controlled. So as you can see here is our fuel pump. We've got the two wires that we just tested. They come from the fuel pump control module. So luckily enough on this vehicle, the fuel pump control module is really close. So let's go to the fuel pump control module and see what we might be missing here. All right, so we're now hooked up to our fuel pump control module and the two wires that we're hooked up to are the red and black wire on pin one and the brown wire on pin two. That's our main power and ground feeds for this fuel pump control module. So if you look here, you can see we're, we're tapped into the wires here. That's our, our channel one is on our power. Channel two is on our ground. So let's go back to the scope. I always, always re revert back to the stack scope just so I can verify I've got a quality connection. Measuring deep record. All right, we're flat lined at zero here. All right, professor, if you could give us a key cycle here. As you can see here, we're still flatlined at zero. We've got no voltage. What you're seeing here is actually the voltage drop of the vehicle cranking. So the load of the engine is, is changing that. Um, so we've still got no voltage here. So if we come back to the wiring diagram, obviously that module is not gonna function if it doesn't have battery voltage getting to it. Our battery voltage is supplied by fuse number 68. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's for the, there. Our battery voltage is supplied by fuse 40 or fuse F88. Now the difference is, is early production and late production. I've already determined this isn't early production and it is fuse F40 that we're testing here. So let's go to the fuse box behind the glove box and uh, check that fuse and relay. All right, so we're behind the glove box now at the fuse panel. Um, the fuse that we're going after is fuse F40, which is this center fuse right here. Given that it's such a tight spot, I'm going to hand the camera back to my cameraman, and he's going to watch the lab scope while I touch that fuse, and you can see the recordings. I will mention, sorry, I will mention while I'm here, like we said, we... We basically duplicated the symptom. The car is fixed at this point. I have removed this fuse and it goes in that location there. All right, so we're connected to the F40 fuse in the fuse box here. And I'm gonna have the professor go ahead and give us a starting cycle here. 
All right, we can see we're cranking, but we have no voltage. We're still at a ground state. We should be seeing voltage, that, that fuse should be supplying voltage to the fuel pump control module. So let's go take a look at the wiring diagram and see where the power comes to that fuse from. Little side note in the process, these tests can also be done with a test light or a multimeter, anything of that nature. At this point, we're just testing powers and grounds. We like the, the lab scope because it can test powers and grounds just like those tools can. Plus it can do many other things. So we go ahead and grab that first. It's on and ready at all times around here. So, all right, we've got the, I'm trying to zoom in a little bit, make it easier to see. We've got the F40 fuse right here and it receives its power from the Terminal 30G relay. Now I will say this is how we duplicated this no start condition is we have removed this relay, but I'm going to show you how I tested and where I found an issue at that relay to send me down the, the next path. All right, so we've got the relay that I showed that we have removed. Um, this is our Terminal 30G relay. If you want to look here at the wiring diagram, so this is where our fuse that we just tested that has no power supply on it, this is the relay that it comes from. So just to explain the basic function of a four pin relay here, you've got four pins obviously, you've got a, two large pins and two smaller pins. So obviously the higher load of this circuit is going to be the fuel pump. So these two large pins are going to be the pins that the voltage flows through to go to the fuel pump. So during testing, we found that we did have voltage on one side, and of course we had a ground signal on the other side, which is it finding a ground through the fuel pump control module. Testing of the control relay side of this relay, we found that we had a ground, but we were lacking power. So most relays or all relays on the control side they're going to have they're going to be ground or power controlled meaning another module or another relay is going to send a power or a ground to that energizing coil in order to close that switch to transfer that power or ground that it needs to transfer um, so in this particular case this is a, a power side switched relay and we found that we are missing our power signal and in this diagram, you can see it tells us to refer to the anti-theft system uh, wiring diagram. So let's go to that wiring diagram and trace that wire and see where it goes. All right, so here's our anti-theft wiring diagram. Here's our terminal 30G relay. Here's that same red wire from that energizing coil. And that is a direct connection to this module here. And we've got the car access system control module or CAS module um, that's located underneath the, the left side of the dash. So what I did in this situation is I gained access to this module and I back probed that red wire or the control wire for the relay and performed a start cycle. We still had no voltage control coming out of this module. So I performed testing on the powers and grounds. We had two powers and two ground circuits that feed this module. Load tested those, they all load test okay. And then I tested the terminal 15, which is our ignition circuit to this module. And it is receiving the signal that the ignition switch is turned on. So it seemed like the module was happy and everything seemed to be working. So something wasn't adding up. So in that, <coughs> that situation, I was like, visual inspection. So let's, let's pull the, connector off and lo and behold when I pull the connector off we've got a bent pin on that number one location for the power supply for that side of the relay so we removed this we actually had to remove the the module out of the housing in order to get the pin because it not only bent the pin it pushed it in a little bit so I was able to finessely straighten that pin out um, and we got the connector to engaged properly and now the circuit comes alive we put the relay in the car starts and runs let's start the car let's start the car <clears throat> so we're going to reinstall our terminal 30g relay here 
and we'll come out back up here to our fuel pressure gauge. The professor's already helping me out, bleeding the pressure off. All right, so we're paying attention to the gauge on the left here. Um, this, this gauge is the pressure that's in this tank. I've got this valve shut, so this is our, our pressure gauge that's tapped into the fuel rail, as we did before. So we see there initially, key cycle, we've got fuel pressure. Go ahead, Professor. And boom, look at that. So, somewhere in the process of replacement of modules or somebody had that module out at some point in time um, and when they went to go reconnect that connector they just didn't have it straight enough or somehow got it cockeyed to where it bent that pin over and that was his whole issue with his no start condition now there were a couple other issues on this car um, I haven't gone further than this point um, right here so I am going to go back and, and look at uh, ISTA and see if we now have communication with our air conditioning control module because we did not have communication with that module before. Didn't really pursue that too much because it's an air conditioning control module where the car is not starting. Um, definitely can't be ruled out in every situation, but it wasn't really my starting point, especially once I found we had no fuel pressure. So let's, uh, let's hook up the ISTA and we're gonna do a, a module scan on this. And this, this is gonna be live. I've not done this yet, so let's see I, what I we got going on. I think one thing for everybody to remember here is this car came in, most people would pop that trunk and would just be like, oh gosh, you know, who knows? When you're getting a car in and you're gonna work on it, I don't care if it comes in with 15 modules in the trunk or nobody's ever touched it. Follow the data. Don't worry about what somebody's done. Don't worry about what's been replaced. If you follow the data, you'll get to the answer. Yep. Now, there may be more than one path that you have to go down because obviously in this case, things have changed. That pin didn't magically bend itself, right? So at some point while this man was working on it, trying to fix his car, the pin got bent. So possibly something else that he did fixed the car. But because the pin got bent during the process, he didn't know it. So now we've got to go in again. Andrew's gonna continue following the data why do we not have any communication with this module? I mean, it was a module that was replaced. So now we're gonna go down that path and come up with the answer on that too, so. All right. All right, so we've got the vehicle hooked up to ISTA. We have done a full vehicle identification. Um, we've got all of our data here. This is the home screen of, of ISTA. For those of you who don't know, ISTA is the factory software for BMW. And ISTA stands for Integrated Service Technical Application. All right, so this has got our VIN information, program levels and things, but what I really want to see is our control unit tree. Let's compare it to what we had previously. And as we can see here, everybody's green. Green is good, green is go, everybody's happy. Previously, the IHKA module right here, which is the climate control module, was yellow. So if you look in the bottom right-hand corner here, this legend shows you green is a control unit is responsive. Yellow is control unit is unresponsive. So previously our air conditioning control module was not communicating. Now we've got communication. We never diagnosed or fixed anything particular on that circuit. But if we went back and looked at some wiring diagrams, I can almost guarantee you that that 30 G relay supplies power to a fuse that transfers power to that module in order for that module to function. So now that we've corrected that bent pin, the 30G terminal is now activated and happy. The module's awake, it's functioning as it should. So we killed two birds with one stone in that, in that situation. Um, he did mention that he's been having a battery drain. The battery dies uh, periodically. So we're gonna go into that and verify that we don't have a parasitic draw. Um, if it does, we might have another video on this car, we'll see. Uh, but this is another perfect example of why we test don't guess Hey guys, if you like this video give us a thumbs up um, Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you can get notified for any of our future videos as always We appreciate you and we'll see you next time